I want to tell you what I think Oklahoma is going to do this year, but I also want to tell you how bad I think it could be, how perfect I think it could be if everything goes right, and the most likely record scenario. They were 6-7 and seven last year out there in Norman. Wild roster churn that I have admitted I probably didn't take seriously enough. They had quarterback injury. They got beaten to death by Texas, 49-0. Brent Venables was a guy who had never been a head coach before and hopped on a bus going about 70 or 80 miles an hour, and it, was, it just was what it was. I don't know what else to tell you. It was what it was. They made a bowl game. They lost the bowl game. I remember we were sitting in this studio watching it on a monitor. So year one was the definition of it was what it was. Well, let's just turn the page, Bob Seeger style. What is the absolute best that it could be for Oklahoma this year? Now, if you're unfamiliar with this game, this is where you set realistic expectations to the side for just a second. And we ask ourselves, if the literal best case happened, if every domino and tumbler fell into place, every needle was threaded, what's the best we could do this year? I think 11 and 1 is the absolute best of best case scenarios for Oklahoma this year. Now, that has to do with schedule combined with drastic roster improvement. But I want to get to the schedule first. This is not to be overlooked. I've pointed this out to you a few times, but I really want to get vivid. Even if you're listening on podcast, I want to get vivid with this for just a second. So I'm going to read you Oklahoma schedule, but I'm not giving you the teams they're playing. I'm giving you the preseason over under win totals. So here's what Vegas thinks about the teams on Oklahoma's schedule. Listen to these numbers. Four and a half, eight and a half. And it should be noted that eight and a half is SMU. So that's a G5 eight and a half, not a P5 eight and a half. So let me start over. Four and a half, eight and a half, four and a half, five and a half. Iowa State's off the board. It would probably be in the four and a half to five range. Texas, nine and a half by 10 miles. That's the best team they play all year. Six and a half, six and a half, six and a half, five and a half, four and a half, seven and a half. This is the lightest load of any conference lift in the Big 12, and the only other argument could be Oklahoma State. Somehow, the governor pulled every string imaginable in that state and, and set both of the in-state teams up, but you still got to win the games. So you don't play Kansas State, you don't play Baylor, you don't play Texas Tech. Still got to have things come together. Still got to have that left side of that offensive line, that defensive line. It's got to be a lot better. Everything about the defense has got to be a lot better. But in this scenario, it all is. In this scenario, everything that was wrong last year, a lot of close losses, by the way, except for the Texas game. Everything that was wrong last year gets righted. So 11-1, and one, yes, it's there. Even the odds makers in Vegas made their over-under win total 9.5, so they expect a big bounce back this year too. But you know that guy, Brent Venables, has been a head coach one year. And it was a disastrous first year. So it's reasonable to have doubts in your mind. And that's where the worst case record scenario comes in. And this one gets a little tough. The worst case for Oklahoma this year would be 6-6. Six and six. That's a huge gap, admittedly. 11-1 and one to 6-6. Six and six. But that's just because, as Meemaw used to always tell me, August feels don't always lead to December yields. You can feel any which way you want to about Oklahoma right now. You could have thoroughly convinced yourself if you live in Lawton, Oklahoma, for example, or Enid, or Broken Arrow, or Wakita, where Aunt Meg famously resided in the movie Twister, robbed of multiple Academy Awards. If you live out there, I know how it works, guys. I do it with Pate State every year. You could convince yourself that everything's good to go, everything's been cleaned up, Every guy lost 30 pounds of fat and put on 30 pounds of muscle simultaneous. Somehow that happened, and the team's never been closer. You know what the practice reports look like. So you can convince yourself of that, but that's August. They don't keep records in August. You know once you get out on the open road, if you got a wobbly tire, uh uh-oh, we can't go back to August again. We just got to ride this thing out. If the defense isn't fixed, that's a really wobbly tire. If they aren't markedly improved just as a roster, just as a team, as a collective, if they haven't elevated above uh, the Baylors or the TCUs or the Texas Techs, which you're hoping they have, then every one of those games is in play. And by the way, if it is too competitive in those games, you're not winning all those close games. Or if you are, no one could predict that. So you you it probably at the very least have a bunch of one possession either way bob games bounce of ball games if you just come up on the short end of those sticks more times than not six and six is not out of the realm of possibility but that's not fun to talk about here's what is at least palatable what is going to happen what's the most likely record scenario for oklahoma i'd say it's nine and three 
and that's a blend of both worlds, obviously. I think there will be major improvement on the team. I, I highly doubt we watch them in week one, two, and three and say, I don't see much difference from last year. However, I think it's pretty realistic to still expect some wobbly parts to the overall Oklahoma bus. And that's to be expected for a number of reasons. But most importantly, Brent Venables is less than 24 months into being a head coach. And this is Oklahoma. It's a big time program. It's a massive, massive step up in competition and responsibility. There's a lot of reason for excitement. And I think come season's end, if they're sitting at nine and three, you've got immensely more reason for excitement and expectation. But you also, you're not out of the woods of growing pains yet. At least I don't think it would be realistic to say that's the, the most likely scenario. So, hey, best case exists for a reason. But man, I think that over under nine and a half is about right. And I would lean ever so slightly to the under uh, just because I know how life in this sport works.